And gentlemen, it's, it's, the, it's that time, it's 10.30, we want to uh, begin our next presentation. As you can see from the screen, there's been a small change. Unfortunately, we had uh, a speaker who could no longer make it um, for uncontrollable circumstances. But, so we've shifted the schedule around a bit. I'd like to introduce Michael Goff, uh, who is going to present to us a, the topic, the big one. Okay. Not uh, Ron No, it's not exactly the zombie apocalypse, but it's bad enough if it happens. Okay. Um, Michael is a CISSP, CISSA, well qualified. Um, he's discovered significant vulnerabilities. He's uh, going to tell us all about what to do when the really bad thing happens. With Michael? That, so, uh, everybody hear me in the back okay? I got a pretty loud voice, so I'd rather not deal with the microphone. Use the mic. Use the mic. Except Josh, anybody want me to use the mic? All right. Oh, that's right. Recording. All right. Uh, that's definitely louder. You can hear me okay, Greg? I need to speak louder. Greg! <laughs> if I know you, you're going to get picked on. I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, my name is Michael Goff. Um, how many people here are aware of the data exposure that happened with the Texas Comptroller? Ah, quite a few of you. Well, um, I'm the poor, unfortunate soul that had to take this information to my boss. And uh, he's here somewhere sitting in the audience. So that's a little bit about me. Um, no, if you go searching for me, just remember Hacker Hurricane. It's a blog that I write, and I'm not Batman's butler or Dumbledore. No relation to these people either, darn it. But the thing I want to talk about is the fact that being, uh, I used to be a consultant with HP, so I was involved with some very large incidents within HP. Um, but also recently with the Texas Comptroller, we had an incident and in, in, an interesting one. And the thing that we kind of fail to look at when we talk about incident response is what happens when it becomes emotional, when logic goes out the window and emotion takes over, when rationality goes out the window and people become irrational. The big one will change the game within you, big time in your company. We have to make some assumptions here. Clearly, I'm not going to waste your time about all the stuff that you should already know. If you don't know about some of the stuff, then go out and, and find it. But one area here, datalossdb.org, good place to do the research for the statistics. But I have to assume you know these things because I really want to focus at, you have all this stuff, so what happens when the big one hits? Everybody knows about Sony, right? Everybody knows about Sony. The, the takeaway here is if you look at the slides down at the bottom here, uh, Sony was at $36 when it started, and it's still going actually, as we know, but basically when Vericode did this, it had dropped a third of its value. That's significant. Uh, yeah, economy, some of, some of that, but the reality is this was huge for Sony. Game changer, no, actually pun intended. Wait, what happened there? Not funny delay there. So yes, bad press. Uh, how many people here will admit to having been involved with something that got press or had a bad breach? So uh, yeah, there's, there's at least three of us in here. This, this stuff is what drives our management crazy. It's the stuff we're underestimating. It's the stuff we're not putting in incident response plans. We can't possibly imagine how people, will, your management will react. And bad press is really a bad thing. But I want to talk also about the fact that, hey, we're number one. But someone did remind me that recently somebody lost a car and it had some CDs and there might have been four million records in there, so we might not be number one anymore. But at the time here, at least for a few weeks ago or a month ago, the Texas Comptroller did become the largest uh, data exposure in Texas with three and a half million records and uh, the unfortunate uh, cause of events that followed. And yes, bad press. Um, deal with the fact that uh, I definitely underestimated going to work for an elected official and what they might do in the event that, a, that an incident of bad nature to this magnitude occurred. Uh, but clearly, bad press was something we read every day. Uh, your management uh, will not react quite like you think they would when this occurs. But wait, the government will save us. So if you don't know about this, they are working on a data breach law. Now, if those familiar with uh, those of us in California have been dealing with this for a while, um, data breach laws are great and dandy and all, and I, just like we heard MJ talk about the fact that HIPAA requires you to, to disclose this information, but the feds want to make everybody do it. So do you think maybe there might be some burying of information that maybe some companies will hide some stuff? 
Um, I think so. And so we're going to talk about what happens. So what will you do? Well, clearly, you're going to start updating your resume. How many people here really feel the fear that if this occurs, update your resume? At first, you're going to think, ah, we're going to work through it. We're going to get through it. But remember, rationality becomes irrational. I'm stealing this from a colleague. And clearly, logic goes out the window and becomes emotion. How management will react will blow your mind. Because really, what do we think we've become? We're just become security professionals and become scapegoats. If something like Sony occurs, or in the case of, of what's involved with me, uh, people lose their jobs. And it wasn't even their fault. So really, we're scapegoats for something that probably, A, we told you existed, and B, already asked for budget, and C, there was no money or you didn't give it to us. So really, what will you do? So knowing this, that you might be fired or you're a scapegoat, will you even tell management? How many people here live with that fear? I definitely know where I've come from. They definitely live with that fear. And if you tell them, will you get terminated? So we gotta, we got to take this into account. Now management. What, what about management? Well, clearly management's going to take the approach, I didn't have any relations with that security person, right? First, they're going to deny it. They're not going to take ownership. They're not going to take responsibility. This is the first big mistake. Okay, I'm sorry, but the, the top has to immediately say, my bad. So that's something we've got to keep in mind. They're also very much me, 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 right? Because all they're really worried about is the bonus. They want to make sure that the Sony stock drop and all the options that go along with that do not occur to them. So again, the seven stages, denial, anger, blah, blah, blah. They're going to go through it, and you are going to be deep in it. And you're going to go home at night shaking your head going, what is going on here? And of course, a famous saying that a friend of mine uh, likes to say, when in danger or in doubt, run around and scream and shout. Boy, we definitely saw a lot of this. And of course, you're fired. That's what management will do. So how would management act if you disclosed a breach of the size of Sony, TGX, Heartland, or the Texas Comptroller? Has anybody even discussed this with management? I want to see a show of hands. Has anybody even said, hey, we need to talk about what, what would happen? You know, let's talk about these breaches. How would it affect our company? How can I even get to the point that I start talking to you about this subject because this is the big one? I mean, it hasn't happened to us, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's probably the reaction, you know, how you respond. And I think all of us can relate to the fact that the little yellow sign is probably the reality of what our management would do, right? I don't want to know about it, and I'm not going to do anything about it until I see my name in the papers or worse. And of course, once that occurs, nothing gets their attention more, especially elected officials and CEOs of companies, when you get your name in the paper. Sony lost a third of their stock value. I'm surprised I did not read about some CEOs at Sony, some e EOs of some sort, doing Harry Carey or something, because, man, that was bad. That was really bad. The interesting thing about Sony is apparently there's a lawsuit going on where Sony actually terminated a bunch of security people that were doing Internet security presence just before this occurred. Now, does that mean there was some inside information that they know this already occurred, so they wiped everybody out before it released? Don't know, won't know probably till the, till the lawsuit's completed. And of course, the comptroller has a reputation. She's you know, well-known, she's well-liked, she potentially is going to run for additional office. This is a bummer. This is tarnishing her reputation. And again, your CEOs or your CFOs who might become CEOs are going to react to this kind of situation. And will they make it worse or will they make it manageable? Us as security professionals have to think about this and realize we have all the plan in place, but this incident is going to definitely change things. And what about you? So let's talk about what you can do. First off, we all have to understand what our company has. A lot of times I've heard as a consultant with HP, we don't have anything anybody wants. Oh, yes, you do. You have resources. If you're a cloud provider, like the company I work for now, we have resources. If somebody got a hold of one of our Amazon instances, there's a lot of juice, a lot of horsepower, a lot of CPUs there. They can do a lot with it. There's nothing in there that you may need, but that device is something they want. Reputation, political. We see what, obviously, LulzSec's been doing in attacking sites. We now heard Anonymous is going after the cartel. That's hackers going after drug people. That's, that's an interesting thing to think about. So you really have to figure out what it is. And again, I would have probably never put the comptroller's reputation down as something 
that I would have really said is a key asset, but it really is. So we have to start considering these kinds of things because that reaction is what you're trying to avoid. You're trying to make sure that she can maintain political office or he or whoever, whoever you work for. So really, figure out what that is. Get everybody to agree what that is. Have you discussed these kinds of things? I talked about this before, but this is something you need to do. We need to get to the point as professionals to say, look, management, we got to talk about this. We need to start talking about this now so in the event it happens, we're not surprised and we're not completely emotionally reacting, reacting here and we're not irrational. We've actually thought about this a little bit so at least it's in our minds. Hopefully maybe even down on paper if you go far enough. That would be really good. And yes, train management. Uh, we do security awareness training, right? We all try to train our users, but what about the reactors when something goes boom? And hey, I think TGX was really clever. They spent a lot of money, or planned to spend a lot of money to fix their issues, realized after giving out these $30, $30 discount coupons, which were transferable, so if I got one and I didn't want to use it, I could give it to Josh, that they suddenly saw an increase in stock because everybody's like, ooh, discount coupon, let's go spend. So from their perspective, whoever came up with this idea, marketing-wise, to deal with the big one was clever because clearly it would diffuse internally what happened and they didn't end up spending a lot of money on the improvements they were told they needed. So again, you, you talk about this ahead of time, you might think about what you could do to prevent management from freaking out. Role-based awareness training. We talk about it. ISO says we have to do it. NIST says we have to do it. Everybody says we have to do it. But do we, has anybody here have management role-based training? Show of hands, anybody? Nobody's raising their hands. So why isn't management a role? Incident management is something we have to do. They are a role in incident management. Yeah, lower management, lower management. No, we need to get to upper management role training here. We need to get them to start thinking about this. We don't want the train wreck to occur. We want them to start thinking about, in this case, a retailer saying, $30 coupon, ooh, that would really diffuse things. Because the people who stop buying from you, AKA Sony, or even worse, uh, Netflix, and what they just went through, right? Just from the fact that they tried to raise the rates and split the service, oh, we're not splitting the service. They gotta think about this stuff before you execute. So you can kind of mitigate the scenario. And again, why is it important not to drop the ax before incident management can fully take hold? If you start firing people before you've completed your work, you're going to lose a lot of talent. And for those of us who are security researchers, um, there's an interesting side effect of being a security researcher, which we saw from down under. Patrick Webster, if you're not familiar with what happened there, he, uh, he found a, a system that did some invoicing. Him and a friend happened to be looking at it, uh, saw some information in the URL, said, oh, what if I change this to number two or whatever he did, and he got his friend's invoice information. He went, oh. So they wrote a script, they harvested about 500 records and realized, oh crap, these people have an issue. And like good researchers and security professionals, they reported it. And of course the company said, thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate that. A few days later, the government shows up at his door, the authorities show up at the door and says, you are in trouble. They tried to press charges against a researcher for harvesting 500 records, when in reality, he did the right thing. But what happens when you do that? People start to talk. People have already left the company when this problem was originally uh, discovered. Things got blown out of proportion. And one thing we know for sure, I can tell you for sure I experienced this in my uh, d uh, data exposure, was people talk once they leave. There was things I saw in the press that there's no way anybody else knew except the people in this room. And that really concerned me because that means there's some angry people trying to, uh, in the case of the comptroller CPA, was just trying to CYA. I'll steal that from a friend of mine. So keep that in mind. Or will they cooperate like the car key vendor? I'm doing a presentation with uh, Ian after lunch about a card key exploit. Um, actually, it's not the key itself, it's the whole system. And I highly recommend you come look at that. We're gonna have the, the device actually set up in the uh, locksmith area. But this vendor, we sent, we notified US CERT about the vulnerability. And within six days of sending them a certified mail message, the CEO of the company contacted us, six days. They have been the most cooperative company ever. They have provided us all the hardware we're about to show you this afternoon. Um, they updated their software based on our recommendations and amazing. But they could have very well said, ooh, you know our systems are used in government agencies. We don't think you should talk about this and here's why. So are they gonna be cooperative or do people reporting stuff? Users, 
right? Every one of us has public users. What will your management do? How seriously will they take? I found this problem, will you fix it? We all work with vendors. I am a third party vendor for you. I found this problem. Salesforce does scans of their partners. For example, I found these issues. You need to fix them or I'm going to cut off your contract. How does management think about that? What kind of priority? It's important to know that and how you're going to deal with that. And you may pay a reward. Google does it with browsers, right? That's uh, Firefox as well. The blame game. Yep, clearly everybody wants to do this. And that's something that is a problem. Because the reality is when you're reacting or overreacting and you've gone completely emotional with the situation, blaming somebody is the absolute wrong thing to do. So if you don't talk about this to your management first and say, look, incident management says we investigate, we gather information, we do a postmortem and we say, this is what broke, this is how it hurt us, and this is what we do to prepare for it. If you overreact before you do all that, this, this pointing games and finger stuff, you're going to fire the wrong people or make your situation worse. And really, it's everyone's fault. Get that to be agreed to as part of this enhanced role-based management training or incident response improvement. Where are you understaffed? Where are you underbudgeted? How many people here think they're not understaffed or underbudgeted? I should see everybody's hand go up, right? No. Yeah, one thinks he's properly staffed. That's rare. And of course, Something to consider, believe it or not, if you really need to fire somebody for political reasons, find somebody who already left. Consider that as an option, believe it or not, because they left. There might be somebody you could actually blame for this. But consider these factors as a part of talking to management. We seriously need to uh, talk about this thing so we can prepare for it. So training management. So what do we train in management? What's important for them to think about? Do we have options? Do we know? What's going to happen? How do we act before the big one hits? First off, don't interfere with the experts. One of the things I can tell you from uh, my experience at the comptroller was we had people that knew zero about security going around to all the division managers, scaring the holy bejesus out of them, making security decisions. That's bad. That is really bad. You really have to leave this kind of stuff in the hands of the experts. And management needs to understand and accept that. If you don't trust us now, and we can't get that, that line of communication going for this kind of problem, you can pretty much guess that that first slide I had about you updating your resume is something you should seriously consider. It is definitely, I definitely look at the companies I work for much differently because of this. Hiring consultants. Oh, we got to bring in Gardner. Oh, we got to bring in consultant A. We got to get an evaluation of this. Wait a minute. I can tell you what's wrong with this environment. I've already reported it or I can tell you pretty quickly what's wrong. You're understaffed, underbudgeted, you didn't buy these five recommendations. This, uh, in the case of Sony, Veracode says a $10,000 scan would have prevented this. They would have found the SQL hole, fixed it, and this would have never happened. All right, so we already know this information. And you gotta get management to trust us to some point that we can tell you a lot cheaper. And I can tell you the cost of these consultants were as much or exceeded the amount of money we needed to have presented the problem at the comptroller to begin with. That's not a good thing. That's a waste of money and it's a waste of resources. Yes, information security is underfunded. How many people here don't agree with that? It's underfunded, right? We are insurance. The companies don't want to pay for it until something big happens. They send, a lot of people told me, the consultants, we're not going to spend that kind of improvement unless something really occurs but how big they don't comprehend a Sony or controller related incident. And that's the part we really need to get in their minds, to think about it. Even if it's a month or two or three or a year, we really, really need them to think about this. I don't want to lose my job and I really want to help you succeed, but we need to know. And you don't want to go down the scapegoat scenario where you just start blaming people and throwing them out the door. If you lose key individuals in your environment, what happens? A, you lose the people that actually know the most about your environment. B, the amount of time it takes you to improve the environment just slowed down. What used to probably take you a month or two or three is probably going to take you six, seven, or eight. So now you're vulnerable even longer. And worse, because you're overreacting, people get scared. What happens when people get scared? They leave ship. That's the reality of it. InfoSec people can help here. Many of us are motivated by the fact that this is cool. This is forensics. This is, I really want to know what's going on. I really want to delve into this. Ooh, look what I found. 
So it's fun for us, sort of, it really is. This is one of those areas, it's not paperwork, you know, I got a nod in the back. This is not the paperwork, this is not the policy, this is not the governance. This is the cool shit that we actually get to deal with. How'd they get in, where'd they get in, what did they do, how long were you here? That's the stuff I know a couple people in this room are really good at. And I'd hate to lose them in the event of the big one. Others loyal to the scapegoats uh, will leave the company. I lasted a month at the Comptroller before I got the hell out. I became the acting ISO, and I said, you people are freaking crazy. And I left. Because A, you weren't making progress on a ship that we had headed the right direction. You turned it around, sent it back to port, and you restaffed. Now, I'm sorry, but no, wrong approach. You're not any better off. You're going to get beaten up. People are going to continue to talk. And since then, I have seen leaks in the paper about what the Comptroller has not done. Wrong approach. I think it was totally, totally the wrong approach. Firing or the threat of termination, once you do this, how do you think anybody worked for the Comptroller now after two people were fired, four people were fired, how confident do you think the people are there with their jobs or how many people do you think left? Our department, all the people that are hired since me or that my boss hired before me are all gone. That's not a good thing because I worked with a great staff, three of the best people ever, they're gone. That's not good. Your company does not prosper there. I can tell you HP, we had the same problem. And again, it's not anyone's one person's fault. Management's the one that tells us we can or can't do anything. I mean, you may find total and utter incompetence. That's entirely possible. And that person deserves to be fired. But you really need to have all your facts. You really need to understand it. And you really need to say, hey, this is what cause and effect. This is the final result. Yes, that entity, person, department, people were at fault. Don't say, I need to fire somebody because I need to show something changed. People are, people are chewing down my neck. This is the overreaction. This is the emotions coming out. And you will weaken your environment if you do emotional overreaction. So takeaways. So here's what I want you to take away with this. I want everybody to start thinking with these couple slides. This will be posted on my website, and I'll provide it to Michael as well for USECCON. We need to repair our management. We have an incident response plan. It may be the greatest on the face of the planet, but we do not have anything in here about this. We need to create role-based training for management. We need to figure out how to have a conversation, lunch and learn. How do you invite your, your XOs into some meeting to say, let's talk about this. Let's start thinking about it. You're a retailer, maybe a coupon. If you're a cloud provider, oh boy, what about contracts? What happens if you get, if you get pwned? you may now start seeing requirements to tell you any breach in any of your infrastructure in the cloud, you might need to report it. And suddenly that's gonna cause them to terminate contracts. A lot of things you gotta think about. But start talking about this. Think about a faux, uh, you know, fake faux cyber event. Anybody ever participate in Cyberstorm 3? Other than you two and me. Anybody, no, nobody's done any Cyberstorm 3 stuff? We'll talk about that in a second. Create pre-decisions, okay. We're a retailer, we're TJX. If something big ha like this happens again, I guarantee you they're gonna put another coupon out. Predecision's been determined. I agree we do not do any press releases for two weeks. I agree the management, number one person, will come out and say we're investigating this, we'll let you know in 10 days. Whatever it is that predecision can come out that can help you to give people time to get information. Management needs information, they want it yesterday. Predecisions have got to take place. Try to come up with clever responses. Get management to consider the worst case scenario. Not that something failed and it's unavailable, but that this person is now targeted, it's gonna be written up in the paper, oh my gosh, the big one, the really big one. Play nicey nice with security researchers, many of us have morals, and do not do something stupid like have the authorities go to them unless you have absolute proof they did this on purpose and there's some serious evidence there. It will just make you look like a complete idiot. Warn them of the loss of talent. Talk to them about Sony. Sony tried to, and posted this, this made all the tweets, if anybody didn't see this, I'd be amazed, where they tried to hire some application security specialists. Those postings were open for over three months. This is Sony, who wouldn't go work at Sony before this? Everybody would have gone at filling the applications. Comptroller could not get decent resumes. They're just now, six months later, filling the vacancies that we had for seven, eight months. That's, that's, that's tough, people are scared, they're shy away from those kind of companies. Because A, they know they're gonna be scapegoats, B, what kind of cluster bomb am I getting myself into? I don't wanna work there. 
build trust. One of the things we don't have with management is trust. We need to get in there and, and realize that we are there for their CYA. That's our purpose in life. And so try to get that. Get them to not play the blame game. That's not good. Cost savings by trusting. Don't go hire a bunch of consultants. Spend that money on actual improvements. Please trust us. Please listen to us. This is what we'll need. We have the priority. It comes up every year. Everybody does budget. Everybody has a priority. Everybody gets some sort of funding or not. And so just execute on the plan. And then if it doesn't work, you can fire us later. But be proactive. That's the big one. Be proactive. If you haven't uh, participated in CyberStorm, whatever, one, two, or three, four is going to be next spring, next, next fall, um, I would recommend it. That was a fantastic experience for me. So uh, my boss set up the local criteria, Homeland Security set up the global criteria, countries all over the world participated, agencies all over the United States and within the state of Texas participated, not as many as I'd like to see. But the experience was fascinating because I'm telling you the reaction to some of these agencies and companies blew my mind. What do you mean you haven't called the Fed yet to find out what's going on with this? Um, it, it, was, it was an amazing experience. So bring it emotionally into your company. What's the unique thing you do that if it got pwned, I'm a cloud provider, I got data, data exchange going on in Amazon as well as Azure, if somebody totally took over one of these units, how would our clients react? What would happen to our, our agreements? What would they do for future business? Would they terminate us? Would they blacklist us? What? Think of the worst possible scenario, understand your assets, and say, let's spend a half a day one of these management brainstorming sessions and say, let's go through this. What do you think you would do? What would be your first response? Well, we'd obviously have this. Go through it. Capture that. Get them thinking. And that's what Cyberstorm 3 was all about. Go through this. Try to see if it would work. Dry run. Uh, probably the worst DR ex you know, experience you're ever going to have, because at least DR, you know, they've gone through it for years and years and years. This is kind of new, and nobody does it. But clearly, it is a great opportunity for you to really get management involved. And like you know, any DR plan, repeat it every couple of years. Uh, Cyberstorms three is every two years. Or Cyberstorms every two years. And if you prepare for that big time breach, really, really bad, Sony controller kind of breach, you can help to avoid or mitigate the issues that will occur, thus avoiding the scapegoat and bus methodology. Because scapegoat plus throw me under the bus does equal termination. How many people in this room do not want to be terminated? I know I'm one of them. Yeah, everybody raises their hand now. So that is the takeaway. Think about this as role-based management. And if you have any questions, great. But if we are going to share any information, the camera does have to go off.